Stumpers, what is going on? We are here for an episode of Twin Towers with Jape. We're recording this on the day of the game. Uh, Jape, how you doing? Doing great. Ready to squash a fuck eye. Yeah, I know. I uh, I feel your vibes not recording this after that game because the juju might be cooked. We might not. Yeah, or that. or uh, we just won't be able to talk about the NFL because we're so fucking jazzed. Like I feel like there's no way I could focus on. <laughs> on Broncos Panthers after this game. No, no. Uh it sh- it should be a good one. I'm going to ask for your score prediction before we wrap up, but we will start with the week 12 slate. I actually don't mind the slate. Uh there's a couple good games that stand out. I like when there's one or two in the one o'clock slot, one or two in the four o'clock slot that I can zone in on. I don't need seven or eight at the, in the same time slot. So I'm actually pretty happy with it. Yeah, it also feels like an interesting like like quote unquote re- Research week where there's a lot of like matchups where I'm like, cool, we get to like actually learn something in this matchup. Uh, yeah, you think so? Okay, I I, I feel like if anything, it's just more. I want to figure out which teams fumble it, so to speak. And I think the game, so, like, even like when there's some matchups, like well, the, the first one, might as well just jump right in is Texans plus 14 at Miami Dolphins. The over under is 47. Th- this one, like. Good teams take care of bad teams. Can the Dolphins bury them? Like that to me is like a little bit of research when we're, we're getting into the, the back third of the year that I'm, I'm looking for to really sort out who's who coming down the stretch. So in that way, I totally understand what you mean now. So we know the Dolphins are a good team. Does a great team put the Texans out of their misery before halftime, bury their will to even want to compete? Or is this sort of like a, a track meet, so to speak, where the Dolphins are comfortably winning, but they ne- they don't have that killer instinct. I uh, I was toying with going Texans plus 14 or the over 47. I landed on the over, and as I told you before we jumped on, it's more that I think uh, I am sort of playing the Texans team total because I feel like the Dolphins pick a number here. They pick their number. They can score. They can move the ball at will, ground or air. I feel like the Texans put up 17 to 20 points. That's where I land, and I think the fish take care of the rest. I like the over 47 here. Um, I mean, I like the over 46 and a half more when I saw it, but, yeah, that's where I land. What do you think? Yeah, I took a long, hard look at Texans plus 14 on this one. They just – as much as I'm saying that I want to see the Dolphins put them away, like with their high-flying offense, the Texans just keep things respectable. Like, that is the hallmark of this season for them. Keep respectable, lose the game. And they, they've done a great job at doing that. But yeah, this Dolphins team, specifically this Dolphins offense, is supposed to be the real deal. And they haven't at many times looked it. They should drop a 40 burger on this team and they should, like you said, put it out of the way by halftime. Like I want to see them put their their boot on the Texans' neck and say, Yeah, we're for real. Like we're banging on the door for the, the championship. Agree. I uh I also have my anytime touchdown in here. And a little bit, I guess. Out of out of the norm, I'll go Mike Gesicki plus one fifty. I like love Mike it. Gusecki. He is my desperation tight end in diff, in a couple different leagues. <laughs> Why do you have a bye week? Uh, I got a bye week in some places. Honestly, he's just the best tight end I could get in a lot of places because tight ends a wasteland. Yep. And yeah, that's all there is. I mean, honestly, if you don't have Travis Kelsey, like everyone else, would just be forced to bench their tight end, like just out of respect to each other. Amen. I think, by the way, before we move on to the next game, you didn't send me your anytime touchdown, so I'm really excited. No, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it right now. I'm really I'm, excited. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just opened the chat <laughs> inside baseball. Um, can I – I'll run off the next game. Is that cool? Yeah, man. Uh, we go Bucks at Cleveland. The Bucks are three-point favorites, three and a half in some spots. Uh, I – I'll be honest, that that hook wouldn't really scare me off anyway. The over-under is 42 and a half. Dude, we do not have a good track record when we like the same game. So it's, stuff, it's true. Stuffers, be aware. We both like the Bucks minus three, minus 115. Give me your reasoning. Uh, I don't know if anyone realized the week the, the rapist comes back in game 12, not week 12. He's not bad. It's still Jacoby Brissett. I don't know why they're they're only hanging three here. Like this is not a good team with him under center. Agree. Uh, what would you have this line capped at? Remember, remember, as as the book, you want action on both sides. 
Yeah, I guess. So I would definitely cross that three number. That's the big thing. Maybe I set it at four, four and a half, five, some, somewhere in that general range. The Bucks obviously aren't blowing people out, but they're definitely the better team. And sure. the, yeah, this this Browns team is three and seven. They have a negative differential, and they come out a lot of weeks and look like they don't know how to play football. You just pretty much filled a spot like a a point that I I don't think many people understand. If the line was four four and a half, I'd be on the Browns. Yeah. That's that's my truth. I'm I'm not. I, I think this game is tight to this number. I think it being a three, I can see the Bucks winning like a 34-30 game. Or, or like pushing. I like the comfort of the three. I think this game is played a lot tighter, especially with the number that was hung. They've sort of leaned me into taking the Bucks and the protection, but anything more than this, I'm on, I'm on the Browns. I, I think the thing you abuse the Browns with uh, as a football team is aerial stuff. Tom hasn't really done it this year. That that's that's still something that's like you know left to be desired. They're gonna have to pound the ball. I think Lenny's doubtful for this game, which. He's overrated anyway, and the Rashad White show should begin. But on the other side, Nick Chubb should be bottled up. The number being three is fucking it's telling me something. Do you know what I mean? Am I nuts? Yeah. Chubb being ineffective against that vaunted Tampa run defense is huge. I also just really like Tom Brady coming off a bye week. I think they can get it together, and I think they can abuse a very bad Brown secondary. I'm I think they cover this number pretty easily. Uh, my anytime touchdown, basically a coin flip between Evans and Godwin. I landed on Godwin. Yeah, very, very confident in this pick. So fade it. Fade it hard. Fade it with everything you got. More value, too, with Godwin. You get plus 160 as opposed to 115. So Love it. I, I, I like that one a lot. Um, where are we off to next? Next, we are going off to maybe the most interesting 1 o'clock game. It is the Cincinnati Bengals at the Tennessee Titans. A few friends of ours are at this game. It's Titans plus two and a half over under 43 and a half. Bengals coming off that bye. Long week for them. What's what's your read here? I'm going to be real with you. I am officially taking a break off the Bengals fade train. I, I had Titans plus two and a half locked in. I have it locked in somewhere, but I didn't want to put it on the show. Uh, I believe this is the type of game where the Bengals holes really show. They, giving up 30 to the Steelers is like, okay, cause for concern. I think the Titans control this game. Uh, it's not an official pick. I actually forgot friends of ours at that game, so really glad I didn't take it because once they see the post, they're going to be like, you faded this team? What the fuck? So I I like the Titans here. And getting points at home is fucking bananas. This is like a, like a coin flip, right? I, I, I was in that same boat where it feels super close, getting the points at home. If I was scared, maybe I'd, I'd eat the juice and take it to a full field goal. This one has me a bit nervous. The, I, I'm a big fan of coming off bye weeks. I think the overall record not for across teams, no matter how good or bad they are, is, is pretty solid. And this is kind of like it, it's got very similar feels to last year's Bengals, where they were kind of limping into the bye week, keeping it afloat, and then they kind of just took off. And this feels like it could happen. If they light up the Titans and win this one handily, be careful. Like, maybe, maybe they're they're turning it back on. They're going into a bye week next week, you're saying? The Bengals. Didn't they just have their bye week? The Bengals? No, the Bengals played the Steelers last week. Oh, they did too. What am I saying? I think so. Yes, they're going, going into their bye week. Yeah. Yeah. They might they be heated going... up going into the bye week last, last year. That's what it is. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, that, that's a valid point. I, I never even thought of that. I figured that's what you meant. Um, do you think there is cause for concern with that Cincy defense? So that Cincy defense is a very interesting unit. They have like a team full of B minus C plus players and Eli Apple and their defensive coordinator is very creative and tends to like from the ground up, recreate the base defense each week based on who they're playing, which is cool. Tennessee's the weird one to try to match up that way because just Derrick Henry is, like a problem of trying to lift a heavy weight, not solve a problem where like you just need to kind of blunt force it. And it's hard to know if they'll have the tools. So that's why their defense can be so weird week to week is did the defensive coordinator figure out the way to deploy his chess pieces to stifle that offense. That's a really cool way of looking at it. Um, I, I think 
they are going to be always that type of team that needs to win with scoring. They're never going to get like grinded out. But I do feel like when they play from in front, when they're up 14, 17, their defense has to be able to flex at that moment. When, when you can turn a team into one dimensional, as you turned the Pittsburgh Steelers into giving up touchdowns to teams in those situations seems suboptimal. Do you know what I mean? And you're still going to win those games, but it just puts a little bit extra stress on that offense to almost, you know, lack of a better word, be perfect. Um, yeah, think- you don't want your offense team to score 40 a game. No, nah, especially when they're playing from in front, right? Chasing points is different. Then, yeah, it's it's a little bit more – it's the game script followed. But also I think one one injury that I, I really wanted to get your, your perspective on, does Joe Mixon really move the needle for the Bengals injury-wise or is Perrine sort of a, a good fill? I think it hurts in the longer term just because Perrine can't really – jam it up the middle like it, it'd be hard to close games with him but it's hard to say joe mixon's been great like if you take out that one game it's been a very subpar season for him like if you're a fantasy owner like you're thrilled that he, he dominated one week for you but you don't feel good about him as your sixth overall pick or wherever he went but it definitely hurts because they don't really have a traditional backup running back but i don't think he's like the key to the ignition in that offense by any means like, if you had to choose between him tearing his ACL and Chase tearing his ACL, like, you're keeping Chase on the field every day. <laughs> wow, the Hunger Games fucking question of the day. Someone's got to die. <laughs> Who's dying? Yeah, that is a fucked up way to look at that one. Uh, I, I have to say, so, sure, I'm a homer. We know what we're watching today. I'm a Michigan guy. Isn't it weird that I feel like the Bengals actually get an upgrade at backup running back? With mixing out because Chris Evans can fucking ball out and actually, there he is. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write this insane story. Now, I, I do believe that Chris Evans deserves to get a look. And when I say that, every time he's asked to do something, he does it quite well. So give the guy a fucking wins today. I'm hammering the Evans over yeah. yards, touchdowns, receptions, all of it. Yeah, if they win today, I'm fucking very in on it. I, I just thought like the Joe Mixon. The dialogue in him is really interesting. I think I parrot what you say is he's not been a great fantasy own. I don't think he's been a great Bengals own, to be honest. And like they've definitely changed. And I think Zach Taylor deserves a little bit of credit about it or for it is that they've changed their game plan the past few weeks minus Jamar Chase. And they've used the running back dump off thing. And I just feel Mixon or Perrine in that scenario, it's a wash. But you're right, hitting hitting a hole with speed, Perrine is not that prototypical backup running back, so it does hurt them a little bit in the long run. In this game, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, when you're there, like I, I just don't think it matters one game at a time, especially in a tight game. But there's gonna be games when they're up 20 and they're gonna really wish they had someone to just jam it down the middle. Big time. Uh moving on to one of the grossest games, the Denver Broncos at the Carolina Panthers over under fucking 36. No fucking Pathetic. 36. The Broncos are one and a half point favorites, but I, I honestly can't get past that line. It is staggering that the Broncos are that disrespected. No, no, no. It's, it's not. It's, I think they're actually complimented. Is that crazy? I think that defense is getting all their flowers. They're like, they should be favorites. Maybe they run back a pick six. That's why they, they're going to score, because the offense deserves l- less respect than this. No? Yeah, I think uh, I, I was looking at it recently. It was the defense is giving up, I think, 16.6 points, and the offense is scoring like 14.5 points per game or something bananas like that. But giving up sub-17 points per game in the 2022 NFL, <laughs> yeah. wow. Like, that's incredible, guys. And just cannot capitalize at all. Are you ready for this hook and ladder? Is there a world that offenses against the Broncos are sort of playing vanilla because they know the offense for the Broncos does shit? And, yeah, the Broncos' defense has been great, but is not maybe inflated because – you know, not the Raiders. Raiders are a bad example. A team like the Chiefs, why are they going to take chances 
why are they going to take opportunities when they know the Broncos cannot get out of their own way on offense? Do you know what I mean? And they almost dumb it down. Do no, no, think- there's definitely a degree of that where sure. teams are getting conservative, especially once they have the lead, just daring the Broncos offense to get them back into it. Right. Okay. okay but at the same time, normally your defense gives up more points when your offense can't stay on the field. Like they're giving up 15 or whatever it was points per game. And they're spending the majority of the time on the field. The offense can't eat the clock. Like those old Pats and Colts teams with, with Brady and Manning, when they were at their offensive peak, had no defensive talent on the teams, but they'd have top 10 scoring defenses because Manning and Brady would just eat the clock and drive down the field slowly and keep them off the field. These guys are doing it with the opposite. Like, like they're on the field the whole fucking game. The Broncos are the lowest scoring team in the NFL. That's that's insane. Yeah, it's nuts. You know, you know what though? It's insane. It's not, close. it's not close either. They're ten points. Sorry, eleven points less than the Texans. It is. It's insane until you've watched them. Then you're like, oh yeah, they look awful. They can't block. They they have turnover issues in the red zone. Quarterback, obviously, quarterback issues that we've talked at length on this show. Like it is believable. It's not like the most unbelievable thing in the world. It's it's just a catastrophic fail. And I think at some point, like John Elway, I don't know how he sort of avoids the the discussion points that he is, he is really the problem here. He is the problem. He had no patience, right? He had no fucking patience to potentially have a mediocre season here, go grab a quarterback in the draft or roll the dice with Locke. They went, they tried to fucking... Quick fix, even if Russ is 2017 Russ, the Broncos aren't Super Bowl contenders. Sorry, they're not. They're not. Man, I this this feels like such a hindsight call though, because we is. all believed we, we all believed that this Broncos team with a real quarterback was because we, we liked the defense, and honestly, no one thought the defense would be this because they're incredible. But we thought their O line would be a little bit better, and the Javante Williams, Judy, and Sutton weapons plus some tight end depth. Like if you told me you were going to get like a five time all pro quarterback on this team, I'd be like, yeah, like they're, they're absolutely competing for a super bowl. Maybe they don't win it, but they're absolutely knocking on the door. Okay. Not, not a lottery team. Like this is, this is insane. No, no, I definitely didn't think lottery team. I just think it was a quick fix. It was a quick fix. It was like, it felt a little bit lazy. It felt like you really don't trust your draft room or your, your you know, the potential to find a guy in, in the draft. And I can't hate it because as a Colts fan, they've swung and missed even more, even more than the fucking Broncos. I just feel like for some reason, John Elway misses a lot of hate. Do you know what I mean? A lot. Because John Elway, he's, he's cool as shit. Well, I thought you were going to say because it's Denver and John Elway. I'm like, yeah, I also get that too. Right, like oh, he just walks into the room, he gives you finger guns, and you're like, "Fuck, that guy's awesome." Yeah. Uh, as with regards to this game, uh, you asked me before we recorded, before we hopped on this, you're like, you "Should take the Broncos," and I thought you were busting my balls because you know, I'm out. I'm never touching this team. We swore off of them. Yeah, I, it I'm, took all my willpower. I I don't know how I didn't take them. The line is begging for it, and I think that's part of the reason I didn't. Yep. Uh, yeah, scared me off. To be honest, I'm probably going to sprinkle something on the over, though. Like, 36 is an insulting number. It's a big, it's real big cat energy. You're going to cheer on. Like, you're not, you can't watch it. Don't watch no, it. No, God, no. That That's a, that's an NFL updates only. Yeah. Oof. And it's nice to have such a low over to cheer for. Like, you need nothing. <laughs> you need nothing, but it might finish 10-3. You're going to be so no. mad. Uh, like, this is the only over I've ever seen where you could realistically get there without touchdowns. Yes. Yes. Uh, Sam Darnold starting, right? Who fucking cares? <laughs> well, dude, you what's, need, what's the difference? You need fucking, you need the ball to move. I think, uh, anyway, <laughs> gross. This is one of those that I, I don't think I have many pieces in fantasy and we just like, oof, rough. Anyway. Gross. Yeah. I got a DJ more that I'm probably going to have to bench, but yeah, I'm, I'm not watching a single fucking second of this game. Uh, Unless like like there's someone's in the red zone at the, the end of the fourth quarter and I need the the over like that's that's it. I'll start watching at that point too. Yeah. I'll, I'll tune in. I'll cheer. I'll cheer it on for you. We'll will it on. Uh, next one, Bears at Jets. Jets are six point favorites with Mike White. Over under thirty eight and a half. 
this is one I didn't get. This one kind of like stopped me in my tracks. Why, why are the Jets this favored with a guy we haven't seen play quarterback in two years? Because we don't know who's playing quarterback for the Bears. It's the only reason. If, if Josh Field, if Josh, oh, I, I didn't realize he was questionable. Yeah, if Fields is playing, Dustin Fields plays. It's a very different game. Uh, I think the line's closer to three. But yeah, him him being questionable is is definitely the curveball. Uh, I'm gonna be fucking really honest with you. This is one of the fishiest lines of the week. This is their fields or not. I don't know that the Jets are six points better than any football team right now with Mike White. I don't. I know their defense is elite, but there is a world where the Jets are going to be even more inept with Mike White. I, I I think this is the fishiest line of the week. You know what they say, Mike White is the New York Russell Wilson. Who <laughs> Can he get to 18? <laughs> well, the, you know what? That might actually be... It might even be less. I think 17 gets you a cover here. The under, this this under begged for my action. Begged for it. 38 is so, man, I, I just can't do, like, unders that start under 40. I'm just never touching. So, correct me if I'm wrong. I think, who the fuck is the backup quarterback for the fucking Browns? Or the, the Bears? I, I think it's me, actually. I think I, like, I might have to get on a flight. I, I should fucking know this, I think. Trevor Simeon. <laughs> Woo! Trevor Simeon versus Mike White. Let's go. It is Brother. you. 12. Stumpers confirm. He, Parsons is Trevor Simeon. He's recording this in <laughs> New York right now. Woof. Uh, okay. So you have a side here. Tell us your side. Uh, Bears plus six, but uh, fucking behind the curtain, your boy didn't do his research this week. Didn't think Fields was was really at risk of not playing. I thought it was much more of a sure thing. If he doesn't play, I'm a little more nervous about this line. But if Fields plays, I, I love this line. Oh, fuck yeah. You you could be getting away with robbery. This, yeah, this absolutely. He, he might be one of the more valuable point quarterbacks in the NFL right now, like top 10, because his team is so shit. And Trevor well, yeah, honestly – now that I think about it, he might be like number three. Yeah, just because the team is so poor, right? Yeah, and like it, the, the whole offense is just him like taking off and running. Like, is it just like Mahomes Allen? And is is it even them? Like, I think I trust the Chiefs offense more with with our boy than I do this Bears offense. Oh, yeah. With me. Henny, Henny's an adult. Yeah, Henny's yeah. an adult. Yeah, yeah. Well, and they got Andy Reid and Travis Kelsey and the best O line and the, the, all, all the things. Like, that's a, a workable fucking team. Same with the Bills. Like, at least they still have talent everywhere. It, he might be number one in terms of just like this offense can't do anything if he's not there. Agreed. I got uh, the big thing we're going to talk about here Zach Wilson getting, getting sat. You love that, right? You Absolutely. So, such yeah. now. Mike White's definitely not the guy. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not in love with that. No. But just more of this show for the organization that they're not going to die because he was the second overall pick. Like, they're not going to waste three years being like, but he was number two, and, you know, sometimes he makes a throw when he's running, and it looks kind of like Pat Mahomes if you've had eight whiskeys and squint and turn your head sideways. Like, he stinks. Move on. Like, ignore what you paid for it. It already sucks. Like, if you buy a food item at, that you really fucking hate, but you spent 20 bucks on it, don't let it mold in your fridge because you paid 20 bucks. Just throw it in the garbage. So I went to the football game on Thursday. We'll, we'll, tell, we'll recap the Thanksgiving games. Anyway, and this was a point of discussion. <laughs> Pardon? You probably should have opened with that. No, no, no. My, my plan was to, to close that. Um, so talking about it, I did mention that you were very pro- sitting Wilson and someone in the car right there was like, I think they sat him more for his attitude to playing poorly than playing poorly. And I heard that. And I was like, fuck, that's a real boomer take. I do think it's kind of in play. Yeah, it is. It's fucking totally play. And I I swear the person who told me that is obviously old and I give him a lot of credit where it opened my eyes and I'm like, fuck, I guess that's in play. It, it has to be parlayed with him playing poorly. Like, if Zach Wilson had six good – or out of six games, three good games, three bad ones, and he comes out after the third bad one saying this, he's still playing this week. It's been bad, 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 followed by disrespecting the defense by being like, yeah, like, buddy. And listen, I'm shocked they did it, 
I respect them doing it, but there is a real world where I was like, holy fuck. Salah's just not going to allow this guy to cost him his job. That's Absolutely. It. And I'll, I'll even go I'll, – I'll out Boomer the Boomer. I think a part of it too is the way he looks and how old he is. Like, you got to remember, like, this is the professionals. Like, there's dudes out here who are also just earning a living. Like, how do you go to the backup defensive tackle who's 35 with four kids – and be like, yeah, the 22-year-old who looks 14 thinks it's your fault we lost, even though he can't complete a pass. Like, yep. these are grown-ass men. Like, this isn't peewee where you can just be like, nah. You, it's unacceptable behavior. You totally out-boomered the boomer there. That was insane. Well done. Kudos, but you know, you're not wrong because this is also, like, I, I think the defense is maybe playing a little bit out of its boots. And you, whatever, if people can disagree, agree. I'm with you I, on that one. I, I don't, you are with me? Yeah. I do think, though, they are a quarterback away from being competitive, very competitive. And I think that's what that should they trade for Russell Wilson? <laughs> how many picks? <laughs> they go no, no, Denver has to give the picks. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's a big move by the Jets. Good for them. I, I think. It's a good organizational move, and I think the coach standing up for his team, it'll go a long way for them. But this must suck for you. The entire AFC East is becoming, like, normal. Yeah, they're good, they're good at their jobs all of a sudden. I know. It's like, fuck, the Patriots take a slight step back, and everybody's just fucking executive of the year, just doing yeah, what they have to do. It's fucking brutal. At least Brian Dable's out of the division. That's nice. Oof, no kidding. McDermott yeah. stinks. Where are we off to? Uh, next, we are Atlanta Falcons at Washington Commanders. Commanders are four-point favorites, showing signs of life, over under of 41. Man. Tell me how much you love, how much you love that D-line. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the cards on the table. I think the Commanders boat race them. The Commanders boat race them. I think this, is, this might be a zone, a weird zone. I'm going to say it. I don't think the Falcons want to win this game. I don't They shouldn't want to. So I'm going to just pretend I'm the ball. Definitely Falcons. do. The, for some reason, they do. They, they keep trying to win these games. They're dumb. So Even I want though them, we keep emailing them and telling them, stop it. I would like to see them get boat raced here and potentially start seeing some Desmond Ritter. And so I hope – I also like the Commanders. And I – in that same car ride, I said the Commanders mm-hmm. are going to make the playoffs this year. And I got called stupid. I'm like, schedule, tough. schedule opens up for them, though. They get the Giants twice. They, there's things that, that are there. Um, thing is, though, the, the, is Giants twice a great thing? Like we, we we really don't know. I think so. I do. I, I, I you know the Haneke magic. Even if it's not, I think I'm more leaning on the side of the Falcons need to figure out how to lose properly. I.e., figure figure out what Dan Campbell's drinking in his coffee. What that man is doing in Detroit, Atlanta needs to start doing lose properly. Or the opposite, put in Desmond Ritter and be good. Like those sure. are the those are the two sides of this coin. What you're doing right now is is like the coin landing, standing straight up. It's it's not going to work. I stand corrected. You're actually very. Right. That is the the correct move. It's a little bit different than Detroit's. Uh, you like a side or a total here? Uh, I like the total actually. Forty one's a pretty low number. The Falcons both give up points and tend to score with their weird, like nineteen eighties high school zone offense with the option and all kinds of weird shit. I could absolutely see this one being, you know, 27 19 for for the commanders and sure. you covering easy and the, the over easy. 41 is a really nice low number for uh, the Washington defense is fine. Their D line is nasty, but like they still give up chunks. So I, I really like the over 41 here. Washington's D line is honestly, fuck. Don't, don't put me in a body bag. They're top five D line. I think they're a top five D line. Not crazy. No, okay. Yeah, top five. I think they get after it. And I think this could be just Desmond Ritter being brought in because Mariota is dead. And that's that. That could be a thing. Mashed potatoes. It, it's the best case scenario. No. Yeah. Uh, very, very interested that you have taken on the big cat regime and you're going with overs that like are close enough to 40, playing them over. I think I like this, uh, this villain story of yours and I'm going to jump on them. 41 feels too easy. I, I'm with you. It's like, yeah, they can get there. Yeah, low, low overs. Give it to me. Give, give me all the bad offense overs you can, I can handle. Because you don't have to watch it. 
You can just tune in. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch the good games and let that shit handle itself. Yeah. I also just love overs because they can, like, especially the low ones because they can just be over so fast. Like, that 36-point over could be done at halftime. You're just like, I win. You know what, you know, you know, quick, like, side note. What sport that is not true in is baseball. Low over-unders have fucked me for the sixes, Dodgers, Giants. For years, five and a half, I play it, never comes through. Football, a lot more likely. Yeah, and there's nothing better than cashing a bet at fucking, like, two o'clock. Oh, like yeah. that, that, that's the good stuff. Well, hopefully, you have, a, you have a track meet first quarter, you cash the over with like five minutes left in the second. Woo! Yeah, that's a good Sunday. Sunday. Yeah, we're, 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 already, we're already we're spending that that profit somewhere oh, else. That, that's all going on the night game. Yeah. All, so I'm gonna fuck up the four o'clock, so you know it. <laughs> uh, next up might be the game I'm looking forward to the most of this slate. I don't know if that that's weird. Yeah, it's the Baltimore Ravens at Jacksonville Jaguars. Ravens are three and a half point favorites over under 43 and a half. This is one of those like we're going to learn some things game I was talking about. Like, right. I'm really intrigued by this one. The, Can I open? Yeah, I don't have go ahead. On it. Uh, main, main reason why I laughed and the video gets posted on YouTube. Why I laugh at this is we had slam dunk opportunity to learn games. We had the Titans Bengals. We had honestly the Bucks Browns are very much there. And you chose the Baltimore Ravens and a quarterback with a hip issue going to the Jags. And I totally get it. It's to figure out if the Ravens offense is, I'm going to say, caught up to the, the Ravens defense. And that's why this is a week-to-week league, because there were weeks early in the season where we made fun of the Ravens D. And now they're carrying the water and Lamar and the boys look a step slow. So I guess my only point here is, is Lamar like significantly hurt? Is that a thing? Is that hip thing a real thing? Or is that just like his agent getting in front of a poor midseason slump? And fuck, is it time to move on from Trevor Lawrence? Give it that's on. The, that's the other big one. Because oh. weirdly enough, Jaguars, positive score differential, which I was really surprised to hear. They're putting up a little more points. He still makes really bad red zone decisions. I don't know what that's all about. Him and Josh Allen might need a support group together where they do really good between the 20s and then just start throwing it away short. But, yeah, I I really want to see him versus a good defense. This is like the first Jaguars game in a while that's watchable and interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to watch this one. I got I got no line on it. I kind of like the Ravens minus three and a half, but they're on the road, so I want to stick away from that. But yeah, just re- really excited to watch this one from just like a, a football guy perspective. Want to hear the gambling guy in me's theory? I hope the Ravens score early, and I would take Jags money line live for like peanuts, like couch money. And if it loses, it's like whatever. But the Ravens have been known to start start well and slow. And Jacksonville's a bitchy place, man. Jacksonville is have caught teams mid season, late season that they shouldn't beat and beat them at home, and now they look like they they're actually decent. So, uh, good things happen in the swamp, man. Question for me, sorry, a question that was given to me that I didn't really have the answer to on this uh, football trip was, has Walker been as good of a first overall as people thought? Because watching a Hutch live was not pretty. How has Walker looked? I didn't know. They're both kind of similar in that, like, there are flashes where they look fantastic. Walker more so just because he is that, like, Hutch is a twitchy, freaky athlete himself, but Walker's a different piece, like, there's only 10 to 15 guys in the NFL that are, you know, big, strong, fast in the way that he is. So there's plays where he just turns a left tackle into dust and turns and changes the quarterback's life. But there's also a lot of plays where he's just fucking lost. Like, it's clear this guy is not a football IQ guy. He's not the constant pro. But the coach just, like, points at the quarterback to get him. And he is a fucking athletic terror. He but- recruit. You'd be recruited as an athlete. Don't yeah. have a position, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just, it's exactly what he is. He's just a freak athlete, and defensive end is the best place to put him. And if I, I feel worse about his chances being on Jacksonville because I don't trust him to be coached up correctly, but he's the kind of athletic talent. Like, if this dude was a Packer or a Steeler, like, it would be a countdown to the all pro season. Right. I think he's also definitely leads all rookies with personal foul penalties he's a bit of a bozo it seems doesn't really catch the yeah. 
Him and Trevor people. Penning should hang out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we go to the four o'clock slate, and I know I said I like a game or two for each slot that are good. I have some hipster games I really like at four, so we'll see. Okay, well, let's start, start with the one that if you say you like, we're going to have to have an intervention. That is Chargers at Cardinals. Chargers are minus two and a half point favorites over under 48. Explain yourself. Yeah, this is definitely the one. Uh, this is this is like <laughs> learn, this is this is like learn about a team game. This is the game, I think. The Chargers, even in wins this year, have played down to competition. And I think coming off that tight loss to the Chiefs where they get their last participation trophy of the year, this is where they come out. They take care of business in Arizona. Quarterback back. Hollywood Brown back. Cardinals, I guess, fighting for Kingsbury's job or not. Who knows? I'm not sure. Uh, The Chargers need to go in there and take care of business. The line's dropping as we record this from three to two and a half. Um... Yeah, this is that's why I'm I'm interested in this game. Is to see if Staley can get the guys refocused. They are now locked into wild card chase as opposed to the division. And this is a game they have to have. I'm with you. Like to me, this one, like I want to like adjust the over under in my brain to like 22 and a half. And if, if they don't, if they don't clear the line. I'm kind of just done with them as a Super Bowl contender, like full sail. Like you got Keenan Allen back. Mike Williams is gone again, and he might just be done with the high ankle sprain. He might not be the same all season. Keenan Allen is the key to your offense. I, I, I don't want to hear any complaints about weapons with Mike Williams gone because Keenan Allen, Jared Everett, and, and Austin Eckler are as good as a skill position group as you can possibly ask for. You're just a douche. Though. You're just a douche when it comes to the Chargers, but you're not wrong there. You're not wrong. Yeah, Lindsley, Lindsley's back. Lindsley's a fucking monster up the middle. Lindsley's not coming back, but again, he's not coming back this year. And I'm not judging them forever, but I'm judging them for this year. And if you can't get it done against this Cardinals team right now, when you're really starting to take on water, I I, I can't support you as you, you, honestly. I can't even support you that strong as a playoff team at this point. If if you can't drum this team, but they they need to beat this team. Like no ifs, ands, or buts. Their schedule is not softened at all. This is. This I don't think beat is enough. I think you need to fucking take it to them. This is yeah. This, this is a learn game. This is definitely that's why I'm excited to watch it at four tomorrow if I'm able to. Um, th- this is the the circled one. Obviously, didn't take anything. I think the twenty two and a half uh, team total. You know the the stump team total is a fair one. They they went twenty to fourteen. We're not impressed. They covered sure. They need to be able to move the ball. The Cardinals are not a good defense. I don't give a shit if it's in the desert or not. Yeah, they're an awful defense. I also want this defense to to show a little more signs of life. The Cardinals' offense is good, not great. And Staley is here because he's supposed to be a defensive right. wizard. And if your defense keeps stinking, after we also gave you all the fucking money to fix it, we traded for Khalil Mack, we signed J.C. Jackson, we've got Super studs. One's missing in Bosa and Derwin James. What what what's the excuse now? Like yeah, Staley, Jackson's, like you're you're out of out of Jackson's also out though. Like I, this, I understand that, but they're the they're the most cursed. How many resources team. can they throw at Staley before we finally start being like, hey man, this is sure. kind of starting to be on you? Sure. No, listen, I, I just I wanted to just put it out there. They're yeah. the most cursed team in the NFL. Sometimes you make your own magic, and I, maybe it's the, this is one of those cases. I've downgraded them from Ferrari. To a Nissan, that's what they are. One of the nice ones was it the Z the ZRT or whatever the fuck no, that no, was called. No, they're a Nissan. Oh, Altima is an yeah. Altima. Okay, <laughs> good on gas. Good on gas. Maybe we get good value on the wild card weekend. Who knows? And just to avoid confusion, this isn't like the Corolla, which is like a shit shell with a hundred grand under the hood and just rips off the line. This is actually just like your grandmother's Altima. Like, it's yeah. for shopping, and, like, it's a reasonable commute car. That's right. And it's cheap at the mechanics, but it always needs to be brought to the mechanic. It's key. Yeah. Got to be there. Yep. Okay. Uh, from the Cardinals, who I fucking hate, to the other team in the same vein I hate, is the Las Vegas Raiders at the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks, three-and-a-half-point favorites. Finally get a little respect. Over under 47-and-a-half. Whoa. That is disrespectful to the Seahawks. That tells me, this line tells me the Raiders' money line is the play. This is way too tight of a line for a three-win team against a division leader. There, I think it's actually disrespectful to the Seahawks. I think that, and I like the, the Raiders' money line. If they weren't sworn off my list, they're sworn off. I can't do it. But 
plus 155. I'm going to tell you why. I think the Raiders are due to win a shootout. They're due. They're going to have a game where they go over the top and Geno Smith and the boys are going to move the ball on the Raiders. You know, team with the ball last wins. I, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. I hate it. I don't know. I have a little more faith in the Hawks defense than you do. Yeah. Uh, we do have a similar sentiment that I really like the over here. I'm not, I didn't make it one of my picks just because it's, it's a juicy line. It's, it's absolute Parsons bait. Like, it's a fucking case of Canadian and a Playboy underneath a box. I'm going to get fucking stuck in the net. Yep. But, like, just – it's so fun. I, I'm definitely going to bet it and watch the shit out of that. 47 and a half. Way too far away from 40 for you. Way too far. No, no, no. I, I won't take unders that are under 40. I'll take an over up to, like, 75. Fuck it. Like, I'll, I'll live. <laughs> you like the over here, though? Like, if, Yeah, I do. Uh, interesting. Okay, yeah. I think – then we're, we're, we're thinking similar. Um. Uh, would you? Would I be shocked if the, the Hawks put up thirty five on their own? No, like the Raiders really these stinks. Raiders, these I, I think the Hawks are coming off a bye, if I'm not mistaken. So should be interested to see how they lock in for a Raiders team. Should be interesting. I I, I just don't see how they don't move the ball all over this fucking team. Oh yeah, the Raiders, your, Raiders, your Raiders hate is like it's dusty. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Deep. They just made all like they just. They built their team in such, like, antithetical ways to how I would build mine. Like, it's like the, the the polar opposite. It's the Mister Negative version of it. They did they did the mat the the fourteen year old playing Madden way. It's yeah, good. absolutely. I don't need a secondary. I don't need an O line. I don't need defensive tackles. I just need wide receivers and defensive ends and flashy stats. And it's like that's not how this works. Okay. And Josh McDaniels is a dink head coach. Never should have left. Ooh, that is just a cocktail. Ooh, that is yeah. brutal. They can't do anything yeah. right. And here's Josh McDaniels, the cuck of all cucks. Yeah. Uh, listen, I think one thing as we move on to the next game, because I'm looking at it, I'm going to go through the first 11 weeks. I'll get your assistance with it. And we're going to rhyme off games that the NFL circled as like, this is going to be the game of the week and is no longer that game. It happens once a week. L.A. Rams at Kansas City Chiefs was definitely supposed to be the game of the week. Yeah, yeah. This is this is supposed to be the America game of the week, big time. Like this is a marquee one for them. And, and now it's a sixteen point line with forty two over under. That means the Rams are yeah. not going to score. I, I have to assume this line means that Stafford is officially out, and maybe honestly, he should probably just retire. Like not not even trying to be facetious, but like his shoulders been fucked for years. He got the ring. He's one of the highest earning NFL players of all time. Fucking call it, man. Like, he's also like 36. You don't need to try to be Tom Brady. Get I, out of here. I did think that. I'm like, is it like retirement season for him? And I mean, if there is an LA Ram fan out there, I'm sure they're happy with the banner because they fly forever. But it's like, yeah, he got he got his. They got theirs. Move on. Yeah. Right? Like. Yeah, they uh, sold. They sold the farm for a championship. They got the championship. Like just from his perspective, like just as a human being, man, like th- this doesn't seem worth it for you. Seems not going to be good until you're forty, and you've been falling apart for years. You got a wife and three kids, man. Go, go enjoy it. You made like four hundred million dollars in your career. Get out of here. That's being super kind. They might not be good till he's like 42, 43. Yeah. That's I right. have, a, like, yeah. I have a fun prop in this game. I like Isaiah Pacheco over 64 and a half yards. I think the Chiefs show some respect to Sean McVay and the boys, and they probably go very vanilla in the second half with a big lead, and they run Pacheco, get Pacheco sort of going, so to speak, because Hilaire is out with a high ankle sprain. Uh, I like the over 64 and a half. I rock with that pretty hard. I also just like the the Chiefs team team total over. Uh, 40 at the moment. You think they put up a big number? What's that? You think they put up a big number? I do. I think they put up 30, 35. Yeah. I think that the only reason I don't want the line is because there's a real chance whoever Matt Stafford's backup is just puts up a goose egg. I don't want to have any of my money on that that asshole. But yeah, the the Chiefs total, give it to me, whatever it is. I'm still not seeing it here. No, I don't think it's up yet. Yeah. Whatever. G- give me that number up to like 33, 34, and, and I'll, I'll take that action. Yeah, I think the Rams are going to be very close to like 
they can't sit guys, but Aaron Donald's going to have like an injury soon, and you got to just shut guys down. Yeah, yeah, he's having like a an undisclosed like lower back issue or something. Yeah, Jalen Ramsey, like he's already kind of phoning it in. Like I love Aaron Donald more than he's he more totally than is. Is, but he is not like going for it the way he he goes for it when they're competing. Would you? No, bro. Th- this whole team should retire. Like this, this is coming from a pair of noted Rams haters, but Aaron Donald, go home, man. Like you've you've already been talking about retiring. You don't want to fucking be here. McVay's got an NBC contract on his coffee table. He's just waiting for the offseason to sign it. Stafford's falling apart. Get out of here. Whitworth was the only one smart enough to fucking leave. He did. He left. Hey, pack this whole fair. thing up. Pack it up. Uh, no, and not just those guys. The whole team. No Rams for three years. <laughs> They come back when they got draft picks. You know, I uh, they're in that ugly spot where they can't really tank because <laughs> the Lions are laughing. The Lions are sitting there, being like, Troy basketball. <laughs> um, let's move on to my pick. I got to pick. Wow, I'm losing value on this line consistently. Uh, I've already made the Canva, so it's nine and a half now. Saints at San Francisco 49ers, nine and a half point spread for the Niners, over under is 43. Fuck you, Stumpers. I got it at nine. Played it at nine. Happy with the nine. I probably played up to ten. I do believe the the Saints are are going to hang around in this game. They, they will not get the doors blown off. But I feel like the Niners control the line of scrimmage enough to take about a 17-point lead at some point. Maybe some ugly backdoor stuff. Uh, I like the Niners. I definitely looked at the over because I feel like the Saints hang, but I'm like, eh, Niners minus nine. What do you think? Like it's the, a big number with a quarterback who tends to, to fuck big numbers up. That's the only thing that worries me. And you'll know fast. Like, if yeah, you watch the first quarter and they feel a little flat, hop on the Saints as the hedge and, and get your money back because Jimmy G won't have it. They'll probably squeak out the win, but he won't cover the big number. Yeah. I, I also feel like the Niners, sure, they blew out Arizona, but that game felt closer than the score indicated. I think the Niners would like a, a fourth quarter where they can sit their guys. So I hope I'm wrong on the Saints hanging around. Um, division up for grabs. I think the Niners are going to be a team I tail a tail a bit down the stretch because they're going to have stuff to play for. And they're by no means safely into the playoffs. I like betting on those teams that I think are good and in that scenario. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like the Niners and I'm ready for your roommate to be like, why did you fade the Saints? They covered. I'm like, fuck off. I'm already. The Saints are six. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations to them for giving the, the Philadelphia Eagles a top 10 pick. Idiots. Uh, next one is Packers at Philadelphia. Fucking low line, eh? Six and a half for the Eagles, over under 46 and a half. I can't think of a, a fucking more depleted, like mentally built football team than the Packers. And they're six and a half point dogs going into Philly. Like, what the fuck is with that line? It it's it's a weird one, man. But at the same time, I'm just like, ugh, like does Rogers dust it off for this one? Because you feel like there's going to be two, maybe three more games this season where he just like he starts dropping dimes again. Maybe they still lose, but they keep it tight. This is his. This, I just this, don't want to touch the Packers anything all year. This feels like his last game of the year. If they get blown out here, I think he gets a lower back issue. Yeah. Jordan Love time. I, I think this. Like it's thumb. He's already been planting the seeds. That he's been playing with a thumb, a broken thumb all year. <laughs> he, I swear, his villain story is amplified because I do a podcast with you. Anytime Aaron Rodgers' news breaks, I know for a fact he's got to check the old Instagram, Twitter inboxes, and it's like fucking cuck. He's faking it. He's doing this. I feel it. I feel it. Um, the Eagles have maybe been figured out. I, I'm not gonna hit the panic button, but that line tells me. The people in the desert don't believe in the Eagles like they did. And I think there's some truth to it. Like, yeah. I've talked about how Jalen Hurts is not pushing the ball down the field at all, and it kind of makes their offense a little more predictable. And if they're just going to jam a safety tight over A.J. Brown to limit their screen potential and clog up the middle so they can't run or throw those tiny crossing roads, the offense is a little less scary. And Sirianni's got to do something about that. Like, they've got to get Jalen to start pushing the ball again. Your coolest pump-the-break moment, I think, of the season was 
when they were undefeated and they had just got boat raced by the commanders, you're like, ask an Eagles fan, eight and one, they'd be happy with that. I mean, a fucking 10 and two, like they're good. They're not like the beasts. They're not what everybody thinks they are. And I think this line is sort of like Vegas coming to that realization. Like, yeah, they can win this game by a touchdown. They could also win it on a walk-off field goal. They can lose it on a walk-off field goal. Like it's it's in play. They're not as solid and it could be game script. It could be anything of that nature. But I will say that line surprised me a bit. I was like, oh, prime time as well. I'm sure this will be bet over seven, right? It has to be. Has to be. Man, Packers public money is is something you can't doubt. I, I just feel like it'll be too naked and afraid to get it under six and a half. Because this at least gives people the opportunity to be dumb and buy buy hooks. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Uh I I think this might be one of those weeks where the marriage is fucked. I gotta walk, I gotta watch the Sunday nighter and the Monday nighter. Because the Monday nighter, <laughs> the Monday nighter, Pittsburgh Steelers at Indianapolis Colts, which you know, if I wasn't a Colts fan, this would have been a nice bye week, but I gotta watch it. Uh can you pick it at the boys? Showing yeah. signs of life. Yeah, two and a half point dogs. Over under 39, which means bet the over. Fuck. I gotta bet the over now. Fuck me. Um, yeah, tell me what you think of this fucking shit mess. Steelers looked pretty lively last week. So did Indy. I think it's starting to put some stuff together. Is this is this sort of the both these teams aren't as bad as they are, but they really are? <laughs> this feels like that game. It's a good way to put it. That's a very good way to put it. Like I don't, I don't think the Steelers are, are gonna do anything real this year, but I saw enough out of Kenny Pickett last week to kind of raise an eyebrow and be like, okay, there, yeah. there might be a little juice here. Like, he looked really good in the pocket, stepped up, didn't panic and take off, delivered a couple of really nice throws. The Steelers have got really solid wide receivers. They always develop them well. The Pickett Pickens connection looks like it's really starting to flourish. Yep. If they can get an O line together, they're, they're going to be a, a, a cheeky little team. Also, Najee Harris fucking sucks farts. Shoot that dude into the fucking sun. I don't think so. I think I think with a good old line he's okay, but I'm glad you took some time to watch that tape because I was saying that on our recap episode. I think Kenny Pickett showed me more than what I anticipated. He's got to lose the gloves. That's like, dude, we're in the pros. It's now. super lame. Yeah. We're in the pros. Unless it's raining and your name's Tom Brady, you cannot wear fucking gloves. Get the fuck out of here, you dork. But yeah, the Pickens thing is definitely true. And I mean fucking crow on that one. He looks like a good pro. Um. Yeah, I can't give you Najee though. I can't. I can't meet you there. This dude. Okay. He, he, okay. Wait I, I don't know if he's got PTSD because of the other line, but that dude's just fucking terrified to run in a straight line. Yeah, he catches well, screens and then starts trying to get outside the DB for some reason. Like run through that guy. Okay, we shall. We should see with that one. But uh, if I put a gun to your head, would you be taking the points or would you be laying the points? I think I would take the points. I am in a pick 'em league. And I took the Colts, although most of the people took the Steelers. So your average Joe Blow knuckle dragger, uh, they're they're on the Steelers side here. They were convinced last week. So for me, I think it would obviously, I think Indy minus 145 would make sense. I feel like sometimes I do this and I overthink stuff. I said it at the Lions game. Sometimes there's games that feel like there's going to be some weird shit happening. And this feels like one of those games, a safety miss. Yeah, there's going to be at least one defensive touchdown. Yeah, and I think this this game might actually be like a 21-20 final. I would take the minus 145, at least some juice. But uh, the one thing I do really like in the Colts' favor is that D-line looked downright nasty last week without Quiddy Pay, and the Steelers have the worst O-line in the NFL, possibly. So they might take over the game. And they played against the best offensive line of football, arguably, last week, and they looked good um, in the in the Eagles, right? Oh, yeah, the, the Eagles O-line's fantastic. Uh also, I think this would be one of those college field games where Steelers or Colts come down the field, down seven, score a touchdown, and go for two to walk it off. Like, just both teams playing with house money type thing. Neither team has a playoff opportunity. So, I like the money line here. It's not an official play, but I will be on it. Yeah, that, that is a fun point. Because not even that, like, both coaches are so secure. Oh, fuck yeah. Saturday, not so much in that he's secure to be the head coach, but, like, there's no downside for him. No. Like he might not be the coach next year, but he'll just go back to being a front office executive, getting hammered with Ursa in the box. Like, I don't think anyone's going to hang this on him. And Mike Tomlin can't get fired. No, he's he's unfireable. And also, 
The only thing I sort of I talk myself out of that college feel is it does feel like Tomlin wants to finish 500 or a game under. It feels like he's chasing that out of pride, a point of like pride and whatever. But yeah, both teams, I feel like you're just playing with house money here. It's fun. Uh, 39 feels like a like fucking a layup, but I can't. Uh, so it's money line Colts. Um, I don't I don't like the over actually. Oddly enough, even though I, I've been talking about that all you day. Don't no, just because I do think this is a game of D lines. I, I think the Colts O line has been notably struggling all year. They've had better weeks recently, but I don't think they're better to have a, a good week against TJ Watt and Cam Hayward. Like that Steelers team is missing a lot of talent. It's not the front seven that's missing. Like those boys can get after it. And our boy Devin Bush, while a pretty bad pro, can still rush the passer with the best of them. So I think they give fits there. I think the Steelers' seven O line makes the, the the Colts D line look like the eighty five Bears, and there's going to be a lot of people getting sacked. True, true. Uh, so that is the preview portion of our episode. So now we're going to be jumping into the recap of Turkey Day and Talk about Turkey. Get, yeah, we're going to be giving our predictions on Michigan Ohio State and a fun soccer question to end it up. So let's start with Turkey Day. Okay, let's start with the middle game because we got the, the least skin in the game. Cowboys 28, Giants 20. So for those keeping track at home, I was eating dinner at the keg watching this with a mush. And the mush was like, final drive. There's no way the Giants don't score here. Knowing I'm holding an under 45 and a half ticket. And obviously they get in. And obviously dinner was ruined. And obviously I turned into a suck for 15 minutes. But that was a nasty backdoor. I'll take it. It's whatever. It's life. I have to say something. Brian Dable has to be coach of the year. That fucking Giants team stinks, and they are in every game. Although they're down 15 there, it felt like they could have been down 40. It felt like the, the Cowboys were that much better for the entire Yeah, they, they dominated all phases of the game. And meanwhile, they're still in the fucking game. And Daniel Jones is a quarterback for one team, and it's like, woof. Uh I feel, their, man, their defense is. I, I think we crowned Dable a little, little too early, though. I think this is one of the most interesting and tight coach of the year races we've ever seen. Daniel, excuse Who, you. What? Did you say McDaniel? Mike, Mike, Mike McDaniel's right. Mike oh, McDaniel. Oh, sorry, there we go. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's two, uh, <laughs> there's two of them. I forgot. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're like so. Oh, like you got Dable. Saying, you got Mike McDaniel. You got Jay Sirianni and the Eagles. You've got Pete Carroll and the the stunning Seahawks. You've got Hackett and the nine and two Vikings. It, it's <laughs> men. Wait, 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 wait. wait We're not Hackett. Sorry. Um, <laughs> O'Connell. O'Connell. There it is. Thank you. <laughs> and and you also Hackett called, is not winning. <laughs> and you also said Jay Sirianni versus Nick Sirianni, which I respect because that yeah, is yeah. a brand. It's a brand. It's, you're boomer. You're it's about confidence. Boomer. You just say it with confidence. <laughs> You're such a boomer, though. Earlier in this episode, I said Josh Fields and not Justin Fields, and I'm like, Phew, thank God I'm recording with Parsons and not Stu. Yeah. All dope. <laughs> just say it with confidence. As long as you say it with your chest, that's right. Yeah, it's pretty open. I, I'm going to give it to you. I'm just saying Drunk Jay. He's done a great job. He's done an incredible job. Drunk Jay at 6 o'clock. I was ready to put a lot of money on him to win the coach of the year because he keeps them in every fucking game. He, he literally does. He does not make the big mistake. It does feel like he's he has his Madden degree in time management, etc. Uh yeah, they Cowboys won. I feel like the Giants played well enough and I feel like I had the right read. I know you hit the over there. I had the under. Yeah, I forgot you had the under. I wouldn't have sent you that uh that that back door baby. <laughs> I know it's okay. I didn't think I was rubbing it in. That was not my intention. I know I don't no no listen whatever whatever anybody Mel could have sent me a fucking angry text. I was only mad at the mush at the table. That's it. Everyone else is safe. Um, yeah, like yeah, you said, the I, Cowboys felt like they, they were crushing this one. Dak with a couple of bad picks that make it seem closer than it was. True. Uh, I feel like I'm just going to have to say this every week. Just less Zeke. He was effective today, but just I want less of it. Give me more Pollard. Uh, and CD other than that, him. like, I didn't dislike how we called it. I, I think C, I think CD was an absolute monster. Yeah, he like they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. There were there was a couple. He was I know he had a, a lot of yards. Yeah, he was six catches for 106 yards. He should have had at least one touchdown. He was tackled inside the five two or three times. 
and he had one in the back of the end zone where he was out by like three blades of grass. Right. That's right. They called yeah. it a touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that one was so, like as close as it could get. Like if they would have called it a touchdown, I don't think anyone would have had a hard time with it. So he had, he had a fantastic game. Only six catches. There was also two or three big pass interferences on him because they just can't do anything about it. Huge, huge game from him. Michael Gallup also looking super cheeky. Like he he gets his too. That's a great complimentary piece. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Michael Gallup actually made a couple like man's catches, like just like contested strong hands. Yeah, he looked really good. Uh, and then more than anything, uh, cousin Mika just like, uh, whoa, what a fucking animal. Uh, un- un- unguardable right now. Unguardable. Cannot cannot stop him. It's not. I'm telling you, man, when he lines up over Demarcus Lawrence's shoulder, there's nothing anyone can do. It's, it's fucking scary. Uh, crazy, crazy little pivot because I was at the game, but they this is the second most interesting game of the, the day because the night game was a fucking disaster. Uh, Bills, Lions, Bills Mafia is fucking as annoying as you can imagine as a They're non Bills fan. Um, we, we were in a section surrounded by them, so I had I lost my voice, it, it was that loud. Like, I, I pretended to be a Detroit Lions fan for life. Um, Aiden Hutchinson didn't look great, that is my first and foremost. He was facing single coverage and got home maybe once. Uh, and I'm going to be honest. I think he looks very confused more than anything. Hopefully they coach him up there. That's why I brought him up earlier. Uh, Josh Allen in between the 20s. Great analogy by you. Very, very true. It did feel at points that he was almost forcing it. And I am surprised. I guess the Bills really needed the game. They were running him as if he has no elbow issue in that fourth Man, quarter. There, yeah, at the fourth, it was like, I want to say like three minutes left they're yeah. up and he takes a huge shot to the knee and gets like just crumpled on the sideline and i was like it's the fucking lions guys be a wild card team it's not that big a deal that's right yeah and i i guess i didn't even think of the wild card thing like you're not going to get home field okay sucks but like without this guy you're not doing anything uh isaiah mckenzie balled the fuck out and listen the lions defense is a lot a lot better than i thought they were but I feel like the Bills' wideouts were short arming some balls. I don't know if it was the physicality of the Lions' corners, but like Diggs on two or three different occasions, we had a really good aerial view. Looked like he just made business decisions on some catches. He was just like, eh, nope, don't want that. Uh, all in all, I told my brother at halftime, grabbing some food, I'm like, the Lions lose this game by a field goal. That is the dream for Dan Campbell. That's God intended. Right? That's the dream. Absolutely. This is the perfect game. Shout out to the Lions for we were both at a game this year. Both times they put up exciting offensive performances with a great game that went deep into the fourth quarter and got the loss. Two good teams. Two yep. really good teams. Yep. Fantastic um, showing. Uh, also, speaking of ball the fuck out, uh, got to let our, our boy Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah. Killer. <laughs> Killer. <laughs> I was belligerently looking at Bills fans, and he had he had the corners on a fucking barbecue, just skilleting them like yep. insane. Jamal Williams also has a fucking nose for the end zone in deep. DeAndre Swift looks like he's lost the step. I don't know if it's the murder. Still looks hurt. Yeah, I I I, I, I kind of want to see him like just rest for a bit. Jamal Williams is running great. Team's doing well. But what I'm really excited for is the other Jay Williams is Jamison Williams slotting in yes. across from Amon Ra. Like, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Listen, Jared Goff is, is the quarterback for the Lions in 2022. 2023, sorry. That's my call. He, he's Ooh. actually he's really good in that offense, man. I, I, What's listen. left on his contract? That might be what really, yeah, what really sure. sells it. I just – can you keep him – like, if the Rams season keeps going this way and the Rams give you the fourth overall pick I don't like, and, the quarterback. And, and they get the tenth overall overall pick is there any world in which you don't move both of those to go get stroud or or young no so their base salary or, or even or even if you don't want to move up with the fourth pick uh levies will be there what's his name from florida richardson richardson something like that yeah, richardson i, I don't think you go he'll richardson. be there I, th- I think you go pocket guy if you can if you're the lions based on the way the I, I agree um so 2023 there's a dead cap release clause of, 20, of 10 million 20 million base. It's expensive for the next two years. I just feel like yeah. he really fits that offense and it's only going to get more dangerous. Jameson Williams is a great point that he brought up when he gets back. You have to really start, you know, choosing your poison. Uh, 
But yeah, the Lions did their fucking job, and they are fun as fuck. And there was that was the I think Stu messaged me the most int- attended Lions game since 2011, and that's the second biggest crowd I've ever been in in my life, other than the Big House nine years ago. It was nuts. It was electric. Yeah. And and uh, Thanksgiving is like the Super Bowl for the Lions. That's that's their week. Oh fuck yeah! Oh yeah, that is their their thing. They love it. Uh, there. A sad but fun stat: uh, the Buffalo Bills, the first team to get back to back wins in Ford Field since like two thousand six or something fucking nutty Rude. like that. Rude. So fucking wild. Uh, in addition, I will say opening snap: Bills Mafia definitely out out louded, out cheered the Lions. Like they, they might be barnyard animals, but they, they can make noise. But midway through the first, I swear, it was Lions Nation being louder. I don't know if Bills fans thought they were going to run away with the game. And it was like, ooh, really close. And to see some sweaty, ugly, incestuous people scared was amazing. And fuck Bills Mafia. Um, okay. So, disclaimer. Was at a casino when the Patriots were playing the Vikings. Just watching but was more hearing what was happening. Give it to me. Weird game. Weird, weird, weird game. It's one of the least Belichick-y games they've played in a while where defense and special teams kept letting them down. Giving up a return touchdown is unfathomable for a Bill Belichick team. The defense just kept giving up really soft zone coverage plays that they wouldn't normally give up. JJ is going to be JJ. Dude's uncoverable. He'll just go over your back if you cover him well. I I can't imagine trying to game plan against that guy. And it's just a really frustrating loss to take when our normally stout defense makes boneheaded mistakes. While Matt Jones has his best game of the of the year by a large margin. Like there's easily 14 points that shouldn't have been on the board for the Vikings and that return touchdown. And on third and three, or sorry, like th- third and goal from like the four-yard line our defensive end just like forgets he's supposed to be setting the edge and not rushing the quarterback and just lets the guy walk past him. It's just a complete fumble. What was your feeling on the Hunter Henry? Like they're just guessing, right? Like the NFL, the, the refs are just guessing at this point. That's a hundred percent a catch, right? I thought so. But the way they have what a catch is worded in the rules. It's you can, seemingly make it a touchdown or not a touchdown based on how you feel that afternoon. Like, I understand what they're saying. Like, the ball definitely moves a little bit, but his hand's also under the ball, so I I don't know if that's supposed to matter. It it looked like a catch and felt like a catch. So, to me, it should be a catch. catch In the same way that, uh, like, like five years ago, the um, I can't remember which Steelers tight end it was who caught the touchdown on the at the, the end of the fourth quarter against the Patriots, and it was called no catch for a similar thing. And I was like, that looks and feels like a catch to me. It should probably be a touchdown. Jesse James. Um, more than more than anything, the Jesse James catch is comparable to the Travis Kelsey catch against the Colts, which wasn't as big, but same idea. They're just guessing. There's no method yeah. of madness. That's why the sport will always feel like it's in control of people not on the field. Just like there should be. Dude, not because the World Cup's on, but there is ball technology that you can say where the fucking ball crosses and is. The NFL refuses to go that route because they want to leave it to four old white dudes to mark where the ball is on every single down. For what reason? So other foolish. than, right? So foolish. Yeah, it's dumb. Um, I will say there is only one way to cover JJ, and that is to make sure Kirk Cousins cannot see JJ. There's the only way. Yeah, you okay. got to get, get a sack. Like, he, he's a monster. Uh, you got to clone. You have to clone Mika Parsons in order to have that game plan because everybody that was making fun of Kirk Cousins the week before, it's like there are not many quarterbacks that are going to be able to move the ball on the Cowboys. Patriots are serviceable. I think the Patriots are strangely, depending on who you talk to, they're either very underrated or very overrated. It's really hard to meet like a, a Patriots fan that or a Patriots uh, opinion that is similar to mine where I think they are a 10-7, and 9-8 and eight football team that should be in the postseason. They're a team that I'm going to bet on come wild card weekend with plus points. I'm never going to back them as a favorite. They fall into like certain things. It's sad that they lost the game on special teams when the week before they win one with special. Yeah, teams. it really, right. it really was a karma thing. Fucking, fucking tough loss. And I mean, I hope for your sake, 
and Bruins. They, you know, circle the wagons and figure it out because I don't hate them as much as I used to. Uh, and Mac Jones apparently is back to being the guy. That's all I heard. I'm not going that far. Like, I, I've never okay. had too much doubt about him over Zappi. I still don't know if he's a long-term answer. But I still stand by the biggest problem is I don't have an offensive coaching staff to know if we're building towards anything because the game plan looks different week to week in the dumbest fucking ways. I agree. Slight morbid positivity from my side. Damian Harris leaves hurt. And I just <laughs> I, I think that the offense is just much better with Ramondre Stevens in there full time. He's also not going to be there next year. So what the fuck is that offensive offensive coaching staff doing? Fuck See, that's not- the funny thing. There's no offensive coaching staff. <laughs> well, guess what? As your goat, your goat is telling you <sighs> you're, gonna, you're gonna cheer for a team and we're still gonna win 10 games. Yeah, because he's he's like going out here getting like Xbox achievements. Yeah. Just like win ten games, no offensive coaching staff. Bing. Yeah, he's playing on fucking hard. That's his goal. Like, remember, uh, remember that when the when Brady was suspended the four games and Garoppolo and Brissett both got hurt, and there was a quick moment in time where Julian Edelman was the listed quarterback. <laughs> like that's the shit that gets Belichick hard. Like that was oh, the yeah. first time his wife got fucked in years. Yeah, yeah. she's like, oh, oh I'm gonna win a game with a wide receiver at quarterback. He loves put, that he, shit. He, yeah, he, put, he would put in Edelman at corner. He played a full season with Troy Brown playing corner. But, like, that's the shit that gets his motor turning. <laughs> he is, yeah, he's definitely playing playing the game on uh, super difficult. Uh, okay, do you want to do the soccer the soccer cue first? Or do you want to do the, the game prediction? You pick. Let's do the prediction. Michigan 31, Ohio State 30. I'm going a little lower scoring than that. Okay. I think we are going to still live in the 1970s and we win 26 20. A lot of field goals, oh, some, on the, is... some on the ground stuff. Blake Quorum with two touchdowns. That's the vibe. He is attempting to play, and I read attempt to play as in maybe a decoy, and that's okay. I, I give him so much respect for at least suiting up. Just suit up and see if your body, see if the drugs kick in. Yeah. Right? And I'm not saying actual drugs. It could be the, dr- the oh, it's drugs. Yeah, it's, it's drugs. But it could be just the adrenaline of the stadium, whatever it may be. I hope he goes. I hope he, he has a game. I don't need him to carry the ball more than 15 times if he's that hurt. But the fact he's shooting gives a lot. I also don't know how long Michigan's defense is going to be able to keep Ohio State at bay. So I think 31 points is a good number for Michigan to get to. Fingers crossed. Uh, second one, more likely to happen scenario. Argentina does not make the next, the knockout stage. Right. That's the A or Brazil finishing second in their group. Let me get a quick Google right quick. I want to look at their group. So Argentina. They've got Mexico and Poland. 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 And Saudi Arabia. That's they lost that one already. So they they, they that's not great. Game. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. And then Neymar is hurt now for Brazil for the final two games where they play Swiss. I'm gonna be honest, that that like doesn't move the needle for me. I feel like he's been like he he's a great player. I'm not trying to badmouth him, but it never felt like he's moved the needle on the Brazilian team. Okay, so you think it's more likely that uh Argentina misses than Brazil doesn't yeah. make it. Yeah, I think so. Their their group is pretty weak. Okay. Serbia and Switzerland. Or did, sorry, did they no, they beat they beat Serbia. They've got Cam, Cameroon and Switzerland. Yeah. Honestly, I'd be more disappointed with them if they don't get nine out of the group. Like they're really head and shoulders above those teams. That's that should be one of the biggest layups. Okay, fair enough. I think if you were to tell me before the tournament started that Argentina had any potential of missing the, the knockout stage, you'd be like, whoa. But it's in play, man. But if I told you they might miss the knockout stage if they downright lose to Saudi Arabia, <laughs> you'd be like, yeah, that's absolutely in play. Yes, yes, for sure, for sure. I just think it'd, it'd be like polar opposite of what everyone believed. Everyone was like, oh, it's got to be Ronaldo, Messi. Someone's got to go deep. And f- to lose Messi early would be crazy. If Poland um, Bull- handled business today, yeah. If if Mexico ties them today, the, the, they're in a tr- oh, dude, they're, they're in a big trouble of- because then Poland just parks the bus because they're through. Yeah, they, they are in a world of hate if they don't get all three today. I, I'm going to be honest. They, they have to. to. They have to. They got so lucky that fucking Poland 
and Mexico play to a draw opening day. Because they didn't, they would be behind the eight ball right now. That that'd be the truth. They would be really in trouble. But Chelsea, uh, World Cup time is always fantastic. Also, rivalry week in uh, college football, fantastic. Great football slate tomorrow. My man, I hope you enjoy it. Stumpers, like, subscribe, comment on YouTube, Spotify. Let us know how the video looks. I always sit by a window, so if there's glare, fuck off. Shout out to Dylan for the music. Uh, Cheers. Enjoy.